بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله خالق الخلق باسط الرزق فالق الأسباح ذي الجلال والإكرام والفضل والإنعام الحمد لله الذي بعد فلا يرى وقرب فشهد النجوى تبارك وتعالى الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل على محمد عبدك ونبيك وحبيبك وصفيك وخيرتك من خلقك وحافظ سرك ومبلغ رسالاتك أفضل وأطيب وأطهر ما صليت على أحد من العالمين وصل على أخيه ووصيه من بعده علي أمير المؤمنين وصل على الصديقة الطاهرة فاطمة سيدة نساء العالمين وصل على سبطي الرحمة وإمامي الهدى الحسن والحسين وصل اللهم على أئمة المسلمين علي بن الحسين ومحمد بن علي وجعفر بن محمد وموسى بن جعفر وعلي بن موسى ومحمد بن علي وعلي بن محمد والحسن بن علي والخلف القائم الحجة المهدي أرواحنا فداه وعجل الله تعالى فرجه وسهل مخرجه وجعلنا من أنصاره وأعوانه والذابين بين يديه بإذن الله My beloved brothers and sisters, let me first express my gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for enabling me to be with you again after a short trip to Iraq in which I visited the shrine of our beloved Imams, Imam Amir al muminin alayhi salam, Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, and Abu al Fadl al Abbas. I pray and I hope that those who have not performed the ziyarah. Inshallah, they will have the chance to visit the shrines of our beloved Imams alayhum salam And you were all in my dua and in my prayers while I was there. And I hope, inshallah, one day we can all together go together and be there together and visit our beloved Imams alayhum salam My dear brothers and sisters, so this month is the month of Sha'ban the month that precedes Ramadan. And we are almost uh, less than three weeks away from the month of Ramadan, the great month of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in the, in the Islamic literature, Ramadan was called the month of Allah. In fact, when someone called Ramadan, the Prophet told him, don't say Ramadan, say Shahru Ramadan, the month of Ramadan, because one of the God's name, Allah's name is Ramadan. So when you say Shahr Ramadan means Shahrullah. And Rajab, the previous month was called Shahrul Ummah, Shahru Ummati, the month of Muslims. And this month, the month of Sha'ban was called Shahru Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. The month of our holy prophet. And in one dua that is highly mustahab to be recited every single day of Sha'ban, after every prayer you perform, in the dua you say, وَهَذَا شَهْرُ نَبِيِّكَ سَيِّدِ رُسُلِكَ Sha'ban. This is the month of your holy messenger, the month of Sha'ban. الذي حففته منك بالرحمة والرضوان. You have surrounded the month of Ramadan with رحمة and with forgiveness, رضوان. وهو الشهر الذي كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله يدأب في صيامه وقيامه في لياله وأيامه بخوعا لك في إعظامه وإكرامه. It says that in this month our Holy Prophet would dedicate his time for worshiping Allah in this month. Of course, our Holy Prophet would worship Allah throughout the year. 
But in this month, in the month of Sha'ban, he would, ex he would do extra prayers. He would fill the time of Sha'ban mostly by two things. By fasting the day and يَدْعَبُ فِي صِيَامِهِ وَقِيَامِهِ During the day he fasts and at night he would spend most of the night worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doing extra rak'ah, extra prayers. My dear brothers and sisters, I always tell my friends, my beloved brothers and sisters, that many of us have missing prayers. Some people were heedless for part of their life. They never prayed, they never fasted. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had guided them to the path. And in fact, this is, this is indeed is a blessing that someone would wake up soon enough to repent and to be guided to the right path. But having done so does not relieve me from my previous obligations. If I had not fasted or prayed for several years, I have to make them up. And the best time to make them up is during those three months, Rajab, Sha'ban, and Ramadan. Because you will get extra reward for performing any worship during the month of Sha'ban. So take advantage of time. Take advantage of the holiness of this month and make them up. Don't wait for someone else to do them for you. I have to do them. So let's take advantage of those days, the holy days of Ramadan and Sha'ban. And by doing extra worship, by making up for what I have missed previously in my life, for getting closer to the book of Allah, the Quran. Sometimes people wait for Ramadan to come so they can recite a few verses of the Quran. Well, Quran was not revealed to be recited only in Ramadan. I'm supposed to recite the, whole, the book of Allah throughout the year, but if I have not done that, so far, Sha'ban is the right time. So, Sha'ban is, is, is a great opportunity for us to follow the Sunnah of the Prophet. And the dua says, Allahumma fa'a'inna ala al-istinani bi sunnatihi fi. This is the Sunnah of the Prophet, the tradition of the Prophet, that he would spend some time fasting the day of Sha'ban, praying and reciting Quran at night. We pray that we can follow his sunnah during this month. On another note, my dear brothers and sisters, today, which is Sha'ban 11th, it corresponds with the birth of another hero of Islam, <clears throat> another hero of Ahlul Bayt, and that is Ali Al-Akbar. The oldest son of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. This man, Ali al-Akbar, was 27 years old when he was martyred in Karbala. And there isn't much about his life, but whatever we got from history on his life is enough, is sufficient to tell us how great this man was. Ali al-Akbar was a young man, 27 year old. And he was described by his father, Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Imam Hussein gave such an accurate description about his son, Ali al-Akbar. And obviously, Imam Hussein doesn't exaggerate. He speaks the truth. When Ali al-Akbar went out to fight the enemy of Allah, Imam Hussein alayhi salam could not help now, mind you that Imam Hussein, till before this moment, never showed any sign of weakness before the enemy. Any sign of weakness. But when Ali al-Akbar went to fight, historians say 
Lam yatamalak. He could not hold himself. He could not hold his eyes. Lam yatamalak an ajra aynayhi biddumu. His eyes were teary, and his the tears were flowing on his cheek. Warafa yadayhi ila sama. He raised his hand. And he says, Allahumma shahad ala haula il qawm. My Lord, you be the witness on those people. Fainahu kad baraza ilayhim gulamun ashbahun nasi khalqan wa khulukan wa mantikan bi rasulik. Salam alaikum wa rahmatullah. My son is the duplicate of his grandfather, Rasulullah. He is the most resembling of the Prophet in the way he looks, in the way he talks, in the way he behaves. Ashbahun nasi khalqan wa khuluqan wa mantiqan bi rasulik. And then he says, wa kunna idha shtaqna ila ru'yati nabiyyik nadarna ila wajhi hadha al-ghulam. The Prophet died in year 10, Hijri or 11. And this happened in year 61, almost 50 years after the Prophet. Imam Hussein says, every time we wanted to see the Prophet, our hearts longed to see the Prophet, this we would look at his face, because his face was, would resemble the face of his grandfather, Rasulullah. Every time, Imam Hussein says, every time, I missed my grandfather Rasulullah, I would look at his face, at my, my son's face, Ali al-Akbar. Now, while Imam Hussein was heading to Karbala, <coughs> he took a nap one day. And after waking up, Imam Hussein woke up by saying, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon, wa la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. And usually you recite this verse when something happens that troubles you. When a tragic thing happens to you, you recite this ayah, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. Ali al-Akbar being concerned about his father's well-being, he asked his father, Imam Hussein, he says, Abatah, lima sterja'at? Why did you recite this ayah? Inna lillahi wa inna alayhi raji'oon. Something happened? Something bad happened? Now this is a few days before Ashura, while Imam Hussein is heading to Iraq. The Imam says, no, not really, but I took a nap. And in my dream, I saw someone, I heard someone is saying, Al-Qawmu yasirun, wal-manaya tasiru min wara'ihim. The people, meaning himself and his caravan, they are traveling, but their fate is traveling behind them. Meaning, their fate will be coming up soon. They will be dying soon, referring to himself and to his companions and family members. And that's why I said, Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raji'u. Now look at Ali al-Akbar. Ali al-Akbar asked his father, Qala abatah, awalasna ala al haq my dear father, aren't we the one who are on the right path? Imam Hussein replied by saying, Bala walladhi ilayhi marji'ul ibad. Of course, I take oath with Allah that we are on the right path. Then Ali al-Akbar comforted his father by saying, Idhan abatah la nubali, idha waqa'na ala al-mawt, aw waqa'a al-mawt alayna. Then why I care if I meet my death or my death meets me? Whether I go to my death or my death comes to me, it doesn't matter. As long as I know I am on the right path. As long as no, I know that I am doing what God wants me to do. To die is not my job. It's not, it should not be my concern. Because as a human beings, we will have to die one day sooner or later. But what really matters for me, instead of being concerned about my death, I need to be concerned 
that when death comes to me, I should be on the right path. I should be standing on the right path and I should not transgress. When death comes to me, I need to make sure that Allah will be happy with me at that time. Otherwise, whether I die today or tomorrow, it is not my business, nor it is my concern. That is the logic of a man like Ali al-Akbar Look at the taslim, at the submission, the level of submission. Does not this remind you of the submission of Ismail, the son of Ibrahim, when his father asked him, when he asked him, when he told him that God had ordered me to offer you as a sacrifice, what do you think? He says, God, Father, just go for what God had ordered you to do. For you will find me of those who are patient. I will accept it. Whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala predestines me to, I will take it. I don't mind it. So my dear brothers and sisters, before I conclude, I would like to remind you of two things. One is next Friday, we will be having the birth of our Imam, the savior of the world, Al-Imam Al-Mahdi Al-Muntadhar. Allah Ta'ala Farajah, the awaited justice. So we will be celebrating his birth by having a huge celebration here at the Islamic Institute of America at 7 p.m. And we, having, we are having a, an honorable guest speaker, uh, Sheikh Abdul Jalil Nawi from Washington, D.C. He will be joining us. And the program will be conducted in Arabic and English. And I would like you all to participate and to be with us, inshallah. At 7 p.m., inshallah. Next Friday at 7 p.m. Also, I shall remind you, my dear brothers and sisters, that on May 11th, on May 11th, we're having our annual fundraising. And I am told that many of my dear brothers and sisters have not purchased their tickets yet. So I want to ask you, and I want to appeal to you, my dear brothers and sisters, that today, before you leave the masjid, make sure you buy your ticket for yourself, for your family members, and for your friends, if you can invite them, to be with us on May 11th at 6 p.m. At, Nad at Nadi Bin Tijbel, Bin Tijbel Cultural uh, Center. And with this, you will show your support for your Islamic Institute of America. Allahumma gfir lil mu'mineen wal mu'minat wal muslimina wal muslimat al ahya'i minhum wal amwat tabi' allahumma baynana wa baynahum bil khayrat innaka mujibu al-da'awat innaka qadhi al-hajat innaka ala kulli shay'in qadir وإلى أرواح المؤمنين والمؤمنات ولشفاء مرضانا وقضاء حوائجنا نقرأ السورة المباركة الفاتحة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر